knew. They knew since at least May of 2010 of Paulson's predatory tendencies. But they did nothing to report him to authorities until September 2016 in response to a subpoena from the grand jury. Troutman himself, the former bishop, Troutman himself, interviewed Paulson in May of 2010, and Paulson admitted to the bishop that he was aroused by voice. Despite knowing of Paulson's admission, the priest was allowed by the diocese to continue in ministry until he was finally suspended by Bishop Persico in 2018. For more than seven years, the diocese allowed Paulson to remain a priest, even though they knew he was a predator. They allowed him to stay there as a threat to others. The jail sentence Paulson received today will finally bring a sense of justice to two of these predator priests' victims. In his victim impact statement, victim number one detailed how Paulson's offending on him has impacted his life. Quote, David Paulson affected my life in more ways than I can count. It has cost me my career and my marriage and my daughter, victim one wrote in his statement to the court. Because of this man's actions, I have suffered for years from mental anguish. I ask that true justice be served on this day. Victim two, whom Paulson attempted to assault in the hunting cabin here in Jefferson County, wrote moving words that were read aloud in court today by our outstanding prosecutor, Dan Dye. His statement speaks to the deep sense of betrayal that he feels toward Paulson. Quote, I convinced myself that the road trips, gifts, and dinners were just you being a friend, victim two said in his impact statement directed at this predator priest. But it was all for an ulterior motive, he went on to say. You used your position of a man of the cloth as a way to manipulate young boys. I trusted you, and in return, you tried to take advantage of that trust. This is important. Victim two went on to say, I hope that this sentence will bring some justice, some closure to anyone, anyone who has been victimized by this man. The courage of those two survivors, the courage of the survivors who graced us with their presence here today is extraordinary. The survivors, as I said before, are heroes. And so while not every victim of clergy abuse across our commonwealth was in court today or represented by those two specific victims we heard from. I hope they receive some sense of closure today as victim two hopes, as Paulson was led off to prison in handcuffs. I hope that these survivors know. I hope that these survivors feel the people are listening. We are listening in the office of Attorney General. People of Jefferson County are listening. People of Pennsylvania are listening, and indeed the whole world is listening and believing their truth. No longer do they have to keep it inside. No longer do they have to live in shame or secret. They are the heroes, and they are the ones who deserve to be heard, and we are listening. I've heard that from victims here in rural Pennsylvania. I've heard it from survivors in Pittsburgh and in Erie, victims from every corner of this commonwealth who stopped and stopped Jen, who stopped Dan and shared their truth with us. When the statewide investigative grand jury identified 301 predator priests across six Catholic dioceses here in the commonwealth, the criminal statute of limitations in place sadly prevented us from charging nearly all of these predators. I said at the time, and I'll reiterate today, we ran each of those living 301 predator priests through a statute of limitations test. Sadly, because of our weak laws here in the Commonwealth, only two could be charged. 
Paulson, who you saw today, and John Sweeney of Westmoreland County. Sweeney previously was sentenced to prison, in fact, it was last month, for sexually assaulting a 10-year-old boy while he served as a parish priest. He is now behind bars. In our earlier investigation into clergy abuse in the Diocese of Altoona and Johnstown, we held two Franciscan friars accountable for endangering the welfare of children by failing to take action to prevent a predator friar from sexually abusing more than 100 children over several years. For failing to take action. These two Franciscan supervisors were among the first clergy members in the United States of America to be held criminally liable for covering up sexual abuse of children by their clergy. The release of the report in August has sparked a movement and a reckoning in this country. Our clergy abuse hotline has received more than 1,450 calls since it was activated on August 14th. 